Welcome back to our video series Demystifying 5G, discussing 5G and our network coverage measurements. The last time we looked already at the measurement results, so uh, this time I would like to go over the configuration with you, how we use the software to configure our scanner to take these uh, measurements. Um, so let's get back and uh, stop the measurement here um, to look at the configuration. Um, so, of course, the very first thing that we will do is um, we're looking into the hardware setup. So, basically, what I did is I loaded the 5G and R driver with our TSME. If I'm uh, loading that driver, you can see here I can set my, my frequencies. What I did in this particular case, especially for non-standalone mode, um, I'm driving it in an expert mode. So, where we find that, so we basically go back um, and uh, go here into uh, the advanced tab, and I would have to put that check mark in here. That check mark would give me all the freedom and flexibility uh, that I need uh, to configure the measurement setup. Um, otherwise, it's just already prepared for standalone mode and it was sweep through the global uh, synchronization uh, uh, channel number raster, uh, like I explained in our uh, technology overview. So let's go back. So you see here basically. Um, the scanner would be able to do an auto detection, but like I said, I know my network configuration and I know that's exactly uh, above a three gigahertz signal. Um, you see here uh, on my signal generator, I didn't do a power ratio between the primary and secondary synchronization signal, so that's why I unchecked uh, the three dB setting here. Um, the network uh, or the standard allows uh, for this, so the scanner would be able to take both. Of course, if you uh, uh, tell him there's no ratio, then he would uh, uh, ignore that uh, setting. So we can do that here. Like I said, I know my configuration that I put up. And um, uh, that's basically what we can do here on, on this side in uh, putting the expert mode in. So if I hit OK, the only thing I need to do is uh, setting the frequency. In my example, like I said earlier on, it is at 3.5 uh, gigahertz. Um, you see here the so-called SSB pattern. Um, that's basically the mapping principles um, that are be defined by the standard. Um, they depending on uh, the subcarrier spacings uh, that we are using. I'm transmitting here at 3.5 gigahertz using uh, 30 kilohertz uh, subcarrier spacing. In that sense, we would have a case B or case C option. How these SSB uh, blocks are mapped uh, from a from a timing pattern point of view. I use the configuration case B in that sense. And then you have here the periodicity uh, for these blocks, like how often they are transmitted. Uh, the standard allows for uh, the option zone here, 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, and 160 uh, milliseconds. In my example, I'm using uh, 10 milliseconds. Uh, the default value that the mobile will assume while I'm just switching it on would be 20. So that's something that is uh, just being set in the standard. But as I said, my example is here uh, 10 milliseconds. So this is the configuration where I'm basically telling the scanner which uh, frequencies uh, to scan for. Um, if I'm doing that, of course, it will uh, load that configuration into the scanner uh, hardware and we could start our measurement. I would like to show you one more thing in this case uh, here, the technology um, 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 description. So you basically can, can look into these uh, different settings uh, that we have. Uh, as an example, um, the uh, transmit power that the network may use for these SSB blocks could be put in here so that we do a, a path loss calculation, um, which is uh, kind of an important, um, uh, not just SIP 6 gigahertz in my example here, but uh, definitely at a millimeter wave uh, frequencies. So you can assess if um, how the network is deployed, a link budget could be fulfilled, uh, uh, important. And then one more thing that I would like to uh, highlight here is then of course the uh, thresholds that we can set. Um, similar, this would be coming over the established LTE connection towards the mobile phone, um, so that the mobile knows what are the thresholds at uh, certain RSRP, RSRQ, or SINR values that you see here uh, put in as default. The mobile would uh, um, know that this is a, a SSB block that uh, it should include in the measurement report or not. Um, so the scanner would, of course, measure always these things, but uh, uh, as it is very sensitive, but these values are taken into account if we assess NR cell quality like I showed you earlier. So what does that mean? Basically, if the SSB is beneath that threshold, uh, we wouldn't take it into account to do the uh, uh, cell quality estimation. If it is above, then it's taken into account. Um, so these are the kind of settings that you can do. So you can really use the scanner and correlate the measurement uh, data 
um, with what the uh, device would uh, measure. So when we have configured all of that, of course, we would be ready to go. So let's uh, uh, start that here real quick one more time. Um, because uh, to, to do this walk test, drive test, uh, you're always interested in um, the performance and the history. Uh, we talked so far only about uh, two uh, views, so there's more that we can add in the software. So let's take a look here. Um, you see here scanner views, uh, 5G and R, and uh, like I said, we have only two activated at the moment. So let's add uh, quickly the history view and uh, also um, the performance view. So I'm doing that here right now. Let's reorganize my windows and let's talk about these new additions. So first of all, the uh, uh, history view, I think uh, a very uh, interesting one here. Uh, if you have multiple cells uh, that you want to detect and measure, um, like a small cell deployment scenario as an example, um, then you can, would see that here, um, uh, which one of those uh, uh, cells is the best one. Uh, but importantly, as you can see, we have here the PCI that is detected. Right now I'm generating only one cell um, um, and one SSB pattern, um, PCI 256, as we, as we used throughout our example. And then you see in that case, what is the strongest uh, SSB index or block that we detected. Of course, I'm not moving here and we're transmitting everything with an equal power. That's why you see it rotating. But over your drive test, we would always see like, okay, at this moment in time, this particular SSB index uh, was the strongest one and so forth. And that could be nicely uh, correlated with uh, what the mobile is seeing. And so you can use that for optimization of um, the network. So the next item we will look at is the SSB performance view. So let me enlarge it here in the software that we can take a closer look. Um, so what you see here is basically uh, an assessment of the performance for RSRP, RSRQ, SINR values based on the detected SSB indices. And um, you see here just over time how we measure that and you can now do your walk test and of course you may uh, um, find different coverage and uh, uh, results for the different SSBs. So um, this is basically a great tool to do and take these looks. And as you can see, there's quite some capabilities within this particular software um, to measure uh, initial 5G and R uh, network coverage and uh, uh, performance and use that for optimization. So what I did here is a very simple demonstration. Uh, I'm using uh, one carrier uh, at this moment. Um, and I put one uh, SSB in there. The question is there could be, uh, uh, does the standard allow for more SSBs and so forth? But this is something that we will discuss in another video in our video series, Demystifying 5G.